Hi, my name is Bagley Crowder, and I'm an IT director with a passion for cybersecurity. And today I'm going to talk to you about phishing and link attacks. So let's go ahead and get started. I'll give you an outline here. So today we're going to look at an introduction to phishing links, machine and software introduction. I'm going to look at Kali Linux. That is a software platform that is designed for security. Unfortunately, it can be used for bad and nefarious purposes as well because every tool that's used for good can be used for, uh, for bad, bad purposes. We're going to look at a live demonstration of credential harvesting. I'm going to give you a summary of the attack. Finally, I'm going to also talk about what an attacker can accomplish, the goals, and then give you a defense summary, how to raise your own security baseline. Let's take a look at uh, a couple of machines here that we're going to use in this. So the two machines I'm going to use in the demo are Kali Linux here on the left with the Dragon and then the Windows 11 machine on the right. Both of these machines are brand new from Microsoft. They've got uh, Microsoft Defender Endpoint Detection and Response on them and they are ready to go. So that makes it even more interesting to showcase this demo and see what you can actually do with two brand new protected machines. Let's start with the credential harvesting example. This is a live example and not a simulation. So stay with me here. Okay, with this example, I'm going to use Kali Linux in a virtual machine and a Windows 11 virtual machine. I've got Kali on my right. That's the attack machine. And I've got just a Windows 11 machine on the left here that we're going to use. I have a server running here, and I'm using the built-in template for the Google Password change request form. Now, it's important to realize that I can make any template and from any real form. I could use a LinkedIn template, I could use a Java template, a Facebook, even an HR form such as Paylocity. I can create these and send them out. Now that I've logged into my real Google account, I've got the setup for the attack. Here I've got my Google Suspicious Activity email. And you will notice that uh, I have changed a link here to point to my Kali server. Let me show you that link. It's going to be the first one here. The rest of the links are actually real links. There's the malicious link there. When I click it, you'll notice my attack has started. Here's my fake portal, my Google portal. And I do have a warning here, but most people will not notice that and won't engage. They'll just go ahead and put in their email, which is what I'm going to do here. Type that in here. And then a password. There we go. I'm going to sign in. And it's strange because it went to the Google site. So that doesn't really alert the user that anything terribly weird is going on, which is powerful. But we're going to look over here on my server on the right on Kali Linux. And everything you see here in the red is captured passwords. I was doing several tests with passwords here, and these are all captured for us. Let's scroll down. Let's see if I can get the recent one. There's another captured password in red. And here it is. That's the one I just typed in. It captured the entire credential. And again, it went to this Google page because that's important. Um, the user will go back and continue trying other passwords and it will harvest all of them at once. So it's very powerful. It will take the user a while to navigate this and usually they won't suspect anything. So now let's do a quick summary of this attack and talk about it. So what you saw were two real virtual machines. Uh, they were fully patched for security. And we saw what happened when Kali was running a server. And the program I was using was called the Social Engineering Toolkit. Those are specifically a design for phishing attacks. One of the things I want you to know is that there are many other toolkits. This was just one that I wanted to kind of showcase how someone can harvest a credential. The other attack toolkits can be used externally to an infrastructure meaning they can come from outside or they can be used inside um, as well. 
and there's a lot of different variables on there. It's very easy to get these things going and to operate them. The whole setup probably took about five minutes. And what we saw would simulate basically a real password change through that email link that someone clicked. And we saw that it was a Google suspicious activity email link them directly to a credential harvester page when I only changed one link. And finally, the attack was completed when we saw that those credentials were captured by our security uh, engineering toolkit. Now that we have full access to stuff as an attacker, it's important to talk about what can be done at this point. Okay, let's talk about what a threat actor can do once they are actually in an account. What are some of the objectives that they may have? What's some of the damage that they can do? Let's take a look. Here's some of the objectives that an attacker can accomplish. Um, number one, he's in the account. So everything that's sensitive in that account, he has access to. We're talking banking information. We're talking financial, medical data. The other aspect is he now has credentials and it is a very human thing to reuse credentials. We hate remembering them. That's very good for an attacker because once he grabs your credentials, he's also going to go out to bank logins, HR portal logins, LinkedIn accounts, other email accounts. There's a lot of opportunities there to exploit. The best thing that you can do to fight against that is to open up, say, a LastPass account that is a secure online portal that helps you create passwords and helps you store them. Another aspect that can happen is they can do further damage to the targeted company and vendors and they can pivot and they can start scaling it to a larger audience because I want you to think about this. Once they get you, they've also got your vendors so they can reach out to vendors and then they've got those vendors and they've got their vendors and their friends and their families. So it, the spider web just keeps larger, keeps getting larger and larger and larger. They can also hide scripts and malicious links. They can redirect users to pages that will download malware, such as ransomware and key loggers. And this is a problem because once you can launch ransomware in an environment, they can actually go in and encrypt your files and declare, hey, if you want these files back, you're gonna pay me in Bitcoin, and usually it's a lot of money. The bad thing is, once they're in your environment, not only do they have you, but once again, they have your vendors. They have the entire community that you're affiliated with. So let's talk about defense, because there are a lot of good objectives that you can accomplish to lower your overall threat risk. And I'm gonna give you some examples of these that you can work on with an IT team and you can, you can have this as a goal. Number one, education. That is a huge critical piece. You cannot hardware out of this risk, meaning you can't buy firewalls, you can't buy appliances to fully mitigate the risk. One of the best things you can do is you create an education platform and you do basic phishing practice with your users to train them not to click on links, not to click on attachments and to become suspicious of emails that they were not expecting. No Before is an excellent example of a company and they provide basically an amazing turnkey training solution for business. We're talking they will help you fish employees and they will also help you develop training programs that are very effective at combating this. The other objective you can have as a company is backups. It's not a matter of if, it is when. I promise you, your users will click that link. They'll click that fake DocuSign. They're gonna open an attachment. They're gonna engage with a cell phone. Your backup strategy should include cloud as well as a local appliance such as Barracuda that will give you local disaster recovery. With that appliance, you can spin up servers and other file stations and servers and really get your business back on track very quickly. Here's another big thing. Do not allow personal email programs such as Gmail, Yahoo, all of that in your company environment. Just block them. 
Your employees have phones that they can check their personal emails. Your company computers are no place for someone to be opening a personal email system on it. They're extremely risky, as we just saw. And anything they do in that personal email also places your company at a greater risk. So just block them. Setting up a security appliance, such as the ones offered by Barracuda to scan emails in your environment, is also fantastic. That is a great way as a, as a first stage protection against this stuff. Barracuda offers amazing appliances that will help you in that mission. Also, endpoint and detection response software, that's the dark trace and the Sentinel ones that come in your environment and they will scan for issues, they will monitor issues in real time. They are great to reduce your threat baseline. And finally, blocking zip files and ISO files at a firewall level is a good thing to do. That should be absolutely mandatory that you do that. So I want to thank you for joining. I hope this was informative for you.